Good afternoon and welcome to the Spring Forum, Spring Payer Forum. Uh, Bill Eifest will be joining us shortly. He typically uh, runs these, but let's go ahead and get started. If you have any questions, if you'd like to put them in the QA section, then Jennifer Morris, who's with Peach State, will be um, responding to those. And Jennifer, let's get started. All right, can you still see my screen and can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, I am Jennifer Morris. I am the Provider Relations Trainer for Peach State Health Plan. And um, I have been asked to facilitate a webinar for you today to talk a little bit about the provider integration between Peach State Health Plan and WellCare of Georgia. So that's the information that you're going to see here today. So some of the things we're going to talk about um, and that we have on the agenda to discuss today are some important dates, no wrong door program, what you need to know, such as things around contracting, claims, adjustments, appeals, utilization management, prior authorizations, continuity of care, eligibility, pharmacy, risk adjustment, quality, incentive programs, member value adds, and then of course items in the provider toolkit that we will, um, that is now actually posted to the Peach State Health Plan website. So the first thing we're gonna look at are important dates. Um, the first of those dates being the acquisition date, which was January the 24th of 2020 is when Peach State Health, or Centene Corporation, who is our parent company actually um, acquired WellCare of Georgia. And the integration date where we become one is May the 1st of 2021. Now the products that are affected by this acquisition are Peach State Health Plan Medicaid and the WellCare of Georgia Medicaid product. Now do keep in mind that this um, does not affect any of the Peach State and WellCare Medicare lines of business, nor does it have any effect on the and better line of business from Peach State. And also the information that you will see here today is information around that affects those members who were assigned to WellCare through 430 and also had the option of that choice change period during the month of March. So one of the things we're gonna look at today is the no wrong door. So we have set things up both on the Peach State and WellCare sides to try to assist you as the providers in the community um, to make this transition and integration as seamless and easy for you as we possibly can. So we have put things in place around claims history, member eligibility, authorizations, claim adjustments, and of course the secure provider portal. Now, with that being said, the first thing you see on your screen is in reference to um, a diagram, which is the workflow or the, the work process of how claims are, I mean, I'm sorry, calls are routed when they come into the WellCare Georgia customer service lines. And that's to either one of the numbers that you see listed at the top of your screen. Now, I know this diagram is a little bit busy and hard to, to kind of read. So we're going to walk through this um, in a little bit more detail to give you a little bit more information. So WellCare does offer two phone numbers for both members and providers. These toll-free numbers will remain live and include messaging for 12 to 18 months during the runout period. If at, when a provider calls in, if they do not choose either option one or option two, then the provider's call would be routed directly to the WellCare existing provider IVR menu and IVR does stand for interactive voice response. So when a provider calls in to one of the two numbers, the Georgia families, it would be the 1866 number. And for planning for healthy babies, it would be the 1877 number for well care. Providers call in, they will hear the option, press one if you're a member, press two if you're a provider. Once you as the provider press two, then your call, you would be offered support based on dates of service either prior to or began on or after 5-1. Option one is for dates of service prior to 5-1. 
So if you choose that option, your call would then be routed to the well care provider IVR system. If you were to choose option two, which is for dates of service that begin on or after 5-1, your call would then be routed to the Peach State Health Plan IVR system. Now the diagram you see on your screen is the workflow or the work process of how calls are routed when you reach out and call Peach State Health Plan customer service at the 866 number listed there at the top of your screen. Now the same scenario, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail um, of how the process will work when you call into Peach State customer service. So the phone number listed above will be used as the going forward line for all providers on 5-1 going forward. In support of the no wrong door solution, a warm transfer option to well care will be offered if assistance is needed with any run out services. If the provider does not choose an option, they will be routed directly to a Peach State Health Plan trained customer service representative. Now, provider calls in to the Peach State Health Plan IVR at the 186 number. The provider will be given different options depending on the dates of service, either prior to or begin on or after 5-1. Option one, is for dates of service prior to 5-1. If you choose that option, your call will be routed directly to the well care provider IVR menu. And if you were to choose option two, which is for dates of service that began on or after 5-1, your call would then be routed to a Peach State Health Plan trained customer service representative. Now we're gonna go over some things that we think are important and that you need to know for this transition. So the first thing is around contracting for non-participating providers. So for non-PAR providers who are interested in contracting with Peach State, they should go to the Peach State Health Plan website at either pshp.com or the link on your screen is pshpgeorgia.com. When you open up the website, across the top, you will see some menu options. You would select the for provider option and then when you get into the four provider menu on the left hand side, there will be some options. One of those options is become a provider. When you click on the become a provider tab in the middle of your screen, some questions will appear. You answer those questions and then below that some additional information will populate for you to complete. Once you have completed all of the information on the form, you would then submit it. Once that information is submitted and received by the health plan, a contracting representative would then contact you. If you were to have any questions or need assistance, you can always reach out to the Peach State Health Plan customer service number at 1-866-874-0633. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about claims and how this process is going to work. So for well care claims for dates of service prior to 5-1, those claims should continue to be submitted to well care. You can submit those claims electronically through um, your clearing houses, utilizing the pay payer ID of 14163. You also have the ability to submit those claims via the secure provider portal. And for well care, that is provider.wellcare.com. Providers also have the ability to submit those claims via paper. And for well care, they would still be submitted to well care, attention claims department, PL Box 31224, Tampa, Florida. Now, if at any time you were to have any questions about where to submit claims for what dates of service, you can always reach out to customer service. If it's Medicaid or Peach Care for Kids, when you call well care, it would be the 866 number. And for planning for healthy baby services, it would be the 877 number. Now, just keep in mind that during this entire integration process, the well care and Peach State Health Plan provider manuals requirements do still apply. So just remember, depending on what your date of service is, 
if it is for well care or peach state, those two provider manual requirements do still apply. So now let's take a look at peach state. So for peach state claims, you have the ability to submit those electronically through your clearing houses using the payer ID 68069. Um, that is for your medical claims, for your behavioral health claims for electronic submission. It would be payer ID 68068. Now you do also have the ability to submit those claims through the provider secure web portal. And for Peach State, that is provider.pshpgeorgia.com. You also have the ability to submit your claims via paper. And for the medical claims, they would go to Peach State Health Plan, PO Box 3030, Farmington, Missouri. And directly to the right of that in the box outlined in red is the information for your behavioral health paper claim submissions. So they would still go to Peach State Behavioral Health Claims, PO Box 6700. If you were to have any questions, the same goes for Peach State. You can definitely feel free to reach out to Peach State Health Plan Customer Service and they would be able to answer any questions that you may have. Now let's talk about claim adjustments and appeals. For well care claims for the Medicaid line of business for dates of service prior to 5-1, the, the adjustments and appeals should be submitted as follows. For disputes, they should go to Well Care Health Plans, Attention Georgia Claim Payment Disputes, PO Box 31370 in Tampa, Florida, or you can submit those disputes on the Well Care Secure Provider Portal at provider.wellcare.com. Now, for the Well Care Claim Appeals, those would go for paper submissions to Well Care Health Plans, Attention Appeals Department. PO Box 31368 in Tampa, Florida. Now for well care, you do have the ability to fax those appeals in and you can send those to the fax number listed there, which is 866-201-0657. Now for Peach State claim adjustments and appeals, I'm gonna give you the information for both medical and behavioral health claims. For, so for dates of service on 5-1 or after, those reconsideration or adjustments and appeals should be submitted as follows. For medical claim adjustments, they should go to Peach State Health Plan, PO Box 3030, Farmington, Missouri. Then directly to the right of that, in the red box, you will see um, the information for submitting those behavioral health claims. And they should go to Behavioral Health Claims, P.O. Box, 6700, Farmington, Missouri. You also have the ability to submit claims via the Peach State Health Plan Provider Secure Web Portal, and that's provider.pshpgeorgia.com. Now, for appeals for Peach State, the only way to submit those is via paper. So for the medical claims, you would submit those to Peach State Health Plan, P.O. Box 3000, Farmington, Missouri. For your behavioral health claims, you would send those to Peach State Attention Provider Appeals, P.O. Box 6000. Now let's take a look at prior authorizations. So what happens with the well care prior authorizations? Peach State will honor any approved well care authorizations through service completion for PAR and non-PAR providers. So authorizations with dates of service prior to 5-1, those claims would be paid for by WellCare. For authorizations with dates of service 5-1 and after, those claims would be paid by Peach State Health Plan. Now, if you have an authorization that dates of service span across 5-1, those will be paid based on the date of service. So well care will pay claims for services prior to 5-1, which means up to 430, and Peach State will pay claims for services 5-1 and forward. Members with special circumstances such as chemotherapy, dialysis, pregnancy, um, those individuals, it's 
Ongoing covered services will be authorized for members with special health care needs for 90 days or until the member may be reasonably transferred without any disruption. Now for those pregnant members, those members may continue to receive services from their OBGYN who provides services at a non-PAR hospital. There will be absolutely no changes to the delivering hospital. And then once that member is admitted to the hospital and they deliver, the hospital would then need to send a notification with information to Peach State about that member's delivery. Then the provider should submit the newborn delivery notification on the DCH centralized prior authorization portal, which is located at the mmis.georgia.gov link that you see listed there at the bottom of your screen. Now, once the provider submits this information on the centralized portal, they would then receive an authorization number for that particular delivery. What happens with the well care inpatient admissions? If you were to have a member hospitalized during the transition period, there will be no changes to the hospital stay or the treating provider. So current inpatient stays with date of service that span across to 5-1, the inpatient facility claims from date of admission to date of discharge would be paid for by WellCare. Now for your professional fee claims, those will be paid for based on the date of service. So claims will be paid by WellCare for dates of service prior to 5-1 or up to 4-30 and for dates of service 5-1 and forward, those will be paid for by Peach State. But now just remember that's only for those professional fee claims. Peach State requires prior authorization as a condition of payment for many services. Peach State is committed to delivering cost-effective quality care. These requirements ensure that our members receive only treatment that is medically necessary according to current standards of practice. This process is initiated by the ordering physician or practitioner with, treating, with treatment ordering authority. We will verify the medical necessity of, of a treatment in advance using independent objective medical criteria. It is the ordering provider's responsibility to determine which specific codes require prior authorization. The prior authorization requirement changes for the listed codes will be effective May the 1st, 2021. Now we're gonna take a look at guidance on how to obtain prior authorizations from Peach State. How do I determine if a specific treatment requires prior authorization? Well, you can log on to the Peach State Health Plan website at pshpgeorgia.com and click on the pre-auth check tab. When you click on that tab, you will then see questions populated on your screen. You would answer the questions by selecting the appropriate responses and then enter your CPT code. At that point, the prior auth tool will advise you whether a service requires prior authorization or not. Once that information populates on your screen, you will see a green box with an N that says no prior authorization is required for that service. Or if it does, you will see a red box that has a Y for yes, and then prior authorization is required for that service. <clears throat> Now, how do I request prior authorization for these different types of services? <clears throat> Excuse me. You may request for the services listed here in this bullet point through the DCH centralized prior authorization portal at the mmis.georgia.gov website. You may submit a request for the services listed here in this second bullet point 
on the appropriate prior authorization form or submit clinical documents to 1-844-870-5064. Now, if you can locate that prior authorization form on the Peach State Health Plan website, which again is the pshpgeorgia.com. Now, if you were to have any questions around authorizations or anything of that nature um, involving the authorization process, you always have the ability to reach out to our medical management department at the 1-800-704-1484. What information will I be required to submit in connection with the prior authorization request? The below information in the middle of your screen would be needed to assist you with processing your request for authorization. If at any point in time you were to have any questions about the required information or the prior authorization request process, you can feel free to reach out to provider services at the 866 number you see listed there on your screen, or you can always reach out to your dedicated provider relations specialist. <clears throat> now, I do want to give you one note um, referencing the items that we are getting ready to go over, which is some medical and behavioral health prior authorization changes that are coming. If you do not see a specific CPT code mentioned in this particular presentation and noted with a change and an effective date, all Peach State prior authorization requirements remain in effect as they were prior to May 1st. There will be no changes. So the only prior authorization changes that will be taking place are the ones that you will see in this presentation today. So for medical prior authorization changes, prior authorization will be required for these services listed below in this chart effective July the 1st, 2021. So the CPT codes that you see listed in this chart will be requiring prior authorization effective July the 1st. I do know that an email blast went out to the provider, the Medicaid provider network, indicating these changes and the effective date of the change. And it went out maybe a couple of weeks ago. Um, but one other reminder, just be sure that you are always remembering to verify eligibility and benefits prior to rendering any services for Peach State Health Plan members. The next thing you'll see is that prior authorization will not be required for these service codes listed here effective on or before May the 1st of 2021. So the CPT codes that you see listed in this chart will not require prior authorization on or before May the 1st. Now we're gonna take a look at behavioral health changes. So prior authorization, I am so sorry. Give me one second, my system just did something crazy. I can pick you up with the presentation if you need to. That would be great if you wanna go ahead and do that, perfect. Let me um, stop sharing, okay. Give me just a second. <clears throat> perfect, thank you so much, Bill. Yeah, Jennifer, my apologies for joining late. Oh, that's no problem at all. Appreciate you, get, appreciate you getting going. No, you are perfectly fine. Let me just try to make sure I shift over to that correctly. I've got it up, but I don't wanna. <clears throat> I have mine back if you want me to do it. Oh, okay, yeah, if you're fine, go, go ahead. I've, I've just, I'm just know that I'm here to back it up. I should be able to get it. All right, let me there, share my screen again. And then let me get back to the page in the presentation. Again, everybody, my apologies for that. Wonderful world of technology. So let's get back to where we were. All right, here we go. So let's see if we can get through this now. 
Um, so prior authorization for, um, these are the authorization changes for behavioral health. So prior authorization will not be required for the codes that you see in the chart below effective May the 1st. So the physician psychotherapy code add-on, the 90836 and the 90838 on the May the 1st will no longer require prior authorization. Now, if you jump down to the chart below, the prior authorization change below is effective for these codes effective May the 1st. So the codes that you see listed there in that chart for psychotherapy codes, the change to that is that participating providers will be allowed the first 20 visits, then an authorization will be required. Now we're gonna jump over to continuity of care. So authorization and continuation of services. Authorized existing services for a new member receiving at the time of enrollment, regardless of their provider's network status for the duration of the approved treatment. Ongoing coverage services will be authorized for members with special healthcare needs for 90 days or until that member may be reasonably transferred without any disruption. Now, those first two bullet points we had discussed um, in the previous few slides, but this third bullet point here, we will talk about in a couple slides further on in the presentation. Um, authorize existing prescriptions for maintenance medications for at least 60 days. Now, move down to coordination of transition services. So a care coordination team member will coordinate existing care to prevent any gaps and ensure continuous services. Now assessment and new care plan development. For new and existing members with ongoing services, our care managers will complete a comprehensive assessment and develop a new care plan. Now we're gonna talk about the difference in how the well care members were affected by this versus the Peach State Health Plan members. So for those well care members, they will remain on well care until 430. They were also offered a special choice change period during the month of March. During that time, they had the option to switch to another CMO. If the member wanted to roll over to Peach State, they did not have to take any type of action. Now, effective date under the new plan regardless if it is Peach State Health Plan or one of the other two CMOs will be May the 1st. Now let's jump down and take a look at the, the Peach State members. So there are no changes for the Peach State Health Plan members. Current members do not have to take any kind of action. They will remain on Peach State and you will remain their primary care physician or other specialty provider. Peach State and WellCare logos are combined in one section of the Georgia Families Comparison Chart. And members that are new to Medicaid may choose Peach State Health Plan or one of the other two CMOs. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about that pharmacy um, transition of care that I mentioned earlier, a few slides back. So transition of care for members that are on non-PDL medications. So we will do our pharmacy authorizations just as the medical authorizations. Those medical authorizations and pharmacy authorization benefits, we will honor the authorizations that were approved by WellCare through the approved date span. So, if you have any kind of approved authorizations already on file for well care, you do not need to resubmit an authorization to Peach State. We will honor those authorizations through the completement, whether it's a span of number of visits or whether it is an actual date span, we will honor those on all sides. So you do not have to resubmit those. Letters um, will be going out or they may have already gone out. I have not received an update to the providers and the members to notify them if they are taking a non-PDL medication. Now on five, one and after, 
the new members will receive a 30 day transition fill. That means the member will be able to refill their meds for the first 60 days, but they cannot refill a med early. Members and providers will receive a letter notifying them of the transition fill. And a copy of that letter is, in the, is on the right hand bottom corner of your screen. There will also be a pharmacy tip sheet that will be available to you to assist with any authorization and benefit questions that you may have. So now let's take a look at risk adjustment and the provider incentive program. For 2020, um, Peach State and WellCare operated utilizing two different platforms. So for Peach State, we utilized Impact and the Appointment Agenda Program. And WellCare utilized the Partnership for Quality P4Q Appointment Agenda Program. But for 2021, we are both utilizing the same Risk Adjustment Provider Incentive Program, and it is now called Continuity of Care, or COC, Appointment Agenda Program. Now, we're going to look at that just in a little bit more detail. The Continuity of Care Program is a risk adjustment bonus program for our providers to complete appointment agendas. It is a claims-based program, and members need to be assessed during the program year by their PCP, along with a claim being submitted to support the provider's assessment. The appointment agendas serve as a valuable tool that provides offices with both insight into historical diagnosis data, as well as clinical services for providers to use to assist in assessing their members to ensure all member conditions are assessed at least one time per year. Providers can earn bonus payments for proactively coordinating preventive medicine and thoroughly assessing all of their patient's current conditions in an effort to improve health and provide appropriate clinical quality of care. Now we're gonna take a look at, oh, sorry about that, appointment agenda um, form and then the steps of how the process works. So on the left-hand side of your screen, you will see a copy of the appointment agenda. And on in the middle of your screen on the left-hand side, the very first column, is the suspected condition. And all the way to the right of that form in the two right-hand columns, the first column is active diagnosis and documented, or the next column says resolved, not present. So basically when you have the member in your office and you are assessing the conditions, you would check whichever box is applicable. Is it an active diagnosis and you've documented it or is it resolved and not present. Once you have completed the form, then it would be submitted to Peach State. And then at that point, we would be looking for the claim. Once the claim comes in, we validate all of the information, and then that's when you would be eligible to earn the incentives. So let's start at the top on the right. It says review appointment agendas located in the continuity of care or COC dashboard in the Peach State Health Plan Secure Provider Portal. You would schedule and conduct a comprehensive exam with the member using the appointment agenda as a guide, assessing the validity of each condition on the appointment agenda. Complete the appointment agenda by checking the appropriate boxes. You would then submit a claim or an encounter containing the correct ICD-10, CPT, CPT-2, or NDC codes. Upon receipt of the proper documentation, Peach State Health Plan will verify diagnoses were submitted and documented appropriately. After this process has been completed and everything has been verified, at that point, the provider would then be eligible to earn those incentives. Now let's take a look at the quality programs. So for well care, five, one and after, they will move over to the Peach State Health Plan P4P program. Both health plans will have the same P4Q program for 2021. Now for Peach State, we, our 2021 program will be structured the same as the 2020, 
but there will be some updated measures, targets, and rates. Now for 5, 1, and after, well care will move over to Peach State's program and it will be combined. So all of the membership and, and everything will be combined 5, 1, and after. So for well care, those member gaps will be processed by well care's reporting systems through 430. And then on 5, 1, and after, the member gaps would be would be reported through the Peach State reporting system. Now the first payout would process sometime in July or August and would be based on a combined HEDA score and combined membership. Now for Peach State, those member gaps would be reported through the Peach State reporting system. Once on 5-1, once that membership is combined, it will be considered continuous enrollment based on the members enro original enrollment date. Again, that first payout will process sometime July or August and will be based on a combined HEDA score and a combined membership. Now I'm gonna go over some of the member value added benefits that we will be offering to our members um, <clears throat> once we go live in on 5-1. So see your smile, dental, vision, and extras. We have expanded adult dental. That includes preventive exams, cleanings every six months, x-rays, and much more. The Peach State Health Plan members um, will be eligible for a free electric toothbrush once a quarter. They, we do cover eye exams and glasses or $100 for contact lenses and upgrades for adults. We do offer an over-the-counter health benefit for our members up to $12 worth of over-the-counter items each month and they, could be, they would be mailed to the member's home and no prescription is required. And the $12, if they do not use it each month, it will roll over to the following months. Health and wellness being, there is a grocery allowance. You receive $50 quarterly for groceries. There is also a Walmart grocery delivery. You receive $50 quarterly for groceries delivered to the member's home. Housing allowance, they can receive up to $250 annually for rent or utilities. The healthy rewards, up to $500 in rewards in debit or gift cards for wellness activities. So that particular benefit, they have to actually earn that by com completing different wellness activities. They, at that point, if they meet those wellness activities, they are also entered into a quarterly raffle where they could win um, an iPod, a Fitbit, or some type of gaming package. Now we're going to look at fun fitness and sports. We have a Weight Watchers benefit. It is online and in-person workshops with a personal health coach for those members ages 18 and older. We have a Boys and Girls Club benefit. It's an annual membership and more for those members ages six to 18 at participating clubs. Gym membership, it's a monthly membership at participating gyms for ages 16 and older. We do offer our younger members sports scholarships. That includes football, basketball, cheerleading, and swimming lessons for those ages six to 18, but we only offer it for one sports selection per year. Um, Girl Scouts, we offer an annual membership for grades K through 12, which also um, helps with those life skill programs. We also have a YMCA benefit. It is an annual YMCA family membership at participating locations for those members ages six to 18. Jennifer, can I interrupt you for just a second? Yes. Um, actually go through these additional value adds and then before you move on to the next topic, I'll ask the question. Some great values. Yes, absolutely. We are very proud of the new, but we've actually added several this year and we are very, very pleased and proud of what we have to offer. So thank you so much. 
Um, so the next thing is love my baby. And this is where we um, assist providers. It's a child care help. It is a benefit for up to $125 annually to help pay for child care costs. We do offer baby showers in the community with prizes up to $200. Um, those prizes could include diapers, spa packages, strollers, car seats, and play yards. Um, up to $95 for Start Smart for your baby program for mom and baby. And what that program consists of is the mom being sure that they are taking that baby to all of their um, visits to their pediatric doctor, taking them to their appointments, making sure that they're there getting, seeing that doctor, getting those vaccines like they need. That's how they would qualify for that, that um, $95 incentive. And we do also offer electronic breast pumps and breastfeeding support for our new moms. Now we also offer a talk and ride package. It is a cell phone. It's three gigabytes of data. It is unlimited text and up to 350 minutes of talk time. Now this cell phone is offered to um, our pregnant members who are high risk and it is um, preloaded with phone numbers. It gives them the ability, I think there's like one or two emergency contacts that are preloaded. It is loaded with um, their doctor's telephone numbers. So they have the ability to reach out to, for emergency assistance, their doctor's offices for scheduling appointments, if they were to have any questions, issues, or concerns. So that's what that cell phone is for. And we also do offer rides to doctors and pharmacy, the pharmacies for our peach care for kids members. Then we also have our steps to success. This one we are very, very proud of. We do offer tutoring services for ages eight to 18 for them to get a personal tutor. We offer a reading scholarship for grades K through 12 for online and homework assistance. We also offer um, assistance with those who would like to take the GED. They can receive testing materials and a voucher for the test for ages 16 and older. We also have a college prep benefit. It's where those um, students in the grades 11 and 12 receive SAT and ACT study guides. We have a college scholarship program up to $5,000 value, and also dorm room kits that are available for those um, that are registered into college for those college um, freshmen. Now, there's also a benefit for members for internet access for three months for grades K through 12 to connect virtually for virtual activities. As we know right now with this COVID pandemic, everything is virtual. So um, we are offering a three month internet access for those, those grades K through 12 to, assist, to, to help assist with um, that connection to those virtual activities. And that does con conclude the value added benefits section. So Bill, you wanna ask your question? This is the last slide. So you don't wanna ask your question now or do you want me to finish this last slide and then we'll ask questions? Sure, go ahead and finish that last slide. That'd be fine. Perfect. All right, so now I wanna to talk to you about the items that will be listed in your provider toolkit. So if you go to the Peach State Health Plan website across, <laughs> and you click on the four providers, um, across, not on the four providers, on the main page, I apologize. On the main page, when you go to Peach State Health Plan website at the pshpgeorgia.com, you will see on the far right-hand side of your screen across the top, you'll see a tab that says all together now. And in that tab, we actually provide tools and things that will help you during this integration period. The, normally, if we were able to do these things face-to-face, -face, we would actually bring these documents in a pretty folder to you, but because we are having to do everything virtual and be a webinar, we can't do that. So in that provider toolkit, you have a document that talks about um, PaceBan Health and the electronic funds transfer information and how you can sign up for that if you'd like to do so. There's a prior authorization guide on how to secure prior authorizations. 
There's a quick reference guide on simplified administrative tasks. There is a document that talks about the secure provider portal and all the functionality that we offer through the portal. There is a timely access document, which is um, the appointment availability and standard um, access standards that are set by the state have that document in there. There's also that planning for healthy babies quick reference guide. We also have now listed out on the Peach State website and the same link, a provider and member FAQ, which is the newest document. And we just received approval on the quick reference guide, the um, Peach State Health Plan integration quick reference guide. That should be out there in the next three to five business days. We have received approval back, but it's not been posted um, out on this link yet. Um, the other document that would be posted out there, it has not yet, but it will be, is that pharmacy tip sheet that we talked about um, on a previous slide. So those are the documents that we have put out there for you um, in hopes to make this transition a little bit smoother and to help you guys with things at your fingertips. So that does conclude the presentation. So um, we can definitely do some questions now. Great, great. Jennifer, thank you so much. I appreciate you leaving some time for questions. Don't know that we have too many coming in, but let me um, at least get this one here and uh, encourage folks to put some, put any other questions that you have in the Q&A section on the screen there. That would be great. So the question says, what, what Medicare effective date are you using to pay non-Medicaid and better claims? Is it still 2015? If not, what effective date are you using? Do you know that? I don't. I don't know that I really understand the question. Okay. Um, um, but I, what we do, I do have someone on here, another panelist from my team mm -hmm. that will definitely take that question. We will take it back and get answers, Bill. And what I will do is follow up with you. I guess that would be the best way to do it. Sure, sure. That's fine. Okay. And, and I would just tell the person that, that sent the question, they were anonymous, but if they want to email me, um, I'll be glad to get back to them with that information. Sure, and, and always know that if you have a question such as that, um, you can always also reach out to your designated um, provider relations rep, whether it's on the Peach State side or the WellCare side, they will both be able to still answer questions for you. Um, so feel free to reach out to your designated provider rep if you need to do so as well. Yep, I'm just putting that in here now, so. Sure. Very good. All right. Well, it's uh, certainly been informative. And I'm sorry that we're not all together in person. As you referenced, you'd have had your nice little kits and stuff for everybody, and which would have been great. But we are uh, so appreciative of you and of, of Brittany for supporting our event this week. And oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you'll stop sharing your screen for me, I've got a couple sure. things I need to share with the group. All right. You should have control. And I want to thank you guys for allowing us to participate in your call today. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to present and get this information out there. If you guys need anything, let us know. And definitely feel free um, to those on the call to follow up with your provider relations specialist. If you, ever, if you have any additional questions, they will be happy to help you. Thanks again, Bill. Yeah, that, thank you so much. Hang on for me for just a second. Sure. We'll give it a couple minutes for people to, to come with any questions. But one of the things that I would have uh, presented at the outset had I been on time today was um, just our list of Georgia HFMA corporate sponsors. Want to thank them for their continued support of the Georgia chapter. The Georgia chapter website is georgiahfma.org. And I'm going to show you, um, this is a uh, the front page, uh, splash page of the Georgia chapter site. What I wanted to show you was in order to uh, obtain copies of the presentations from this week, uh, as well as the link to the YouTube to listen to the, uh, to the webinars, you can go to media, the media tab over here to the right, go down to document library, click on document library, Scroll down to the in case you missed it section, double click on the in case you missed it section, double click on the 2021, and then double click on the virtual payer form and you'll see the presentations pop up for the different uh, 
different payers from this week, as well as the YouTube link. There's also some additional information that I got today from United Healthcare that uh, I've asked to be to put on that I've asked to be put out on there as well. So um, wanted to make sure that you guys all felt comfortable with that. And um, I would just thank you again for your support this week of the Georgia chapter and uh, look forward to some continued education coming up in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, and uh, I just hope that everybody has a, a good remainder of the spring and a great summer and look forward to seeing many of you at uh, some of our upcoming events. So Jennifer, thank you again to you and also to Brittany for your support of the forum this week. Uh, thanks for all their time and preparation. I think it was certainly valuable and informative information. I'm not seeing any other questions or chats come in right now. So um, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and, and, uh, and conclude things here. Thank you so much. Again, um, we do appreciate you guys reaching out to us and allowing this opportunity to present this information. Thank you again so much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, everybody. Well, we'll look forward to uh, getting you getting with you the next time that we host one of these. So thanks for everything. And we'll talk to you soon. Everybody stay well.